And good evening, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hey, how are you? Hi, Don. Doing great. It's chilly here in Phoenix. It's chilly in Texas. <laughs> what do you all consider chilly? I don't know what the temperature is right offhand, but it's windy and that that's a deal breaker. Um, I know this morning it was in the 50s, but which is, you know, my comfort level because I like it cold because I grew up in Arizona. Um, but um, it, it's let me see, it's 45 degrees, but it feels like 40 and it's nine miles an hour wind sure feels like a lot harder. It's cold. It was 28 this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, cool. it, got, it got up to about 58. Uh, and now it's dropping pretty quickly. And I've been sitting here in my office with my jacket on because <clears throat> I was I was out doing something today. So my jacket on, and I realized I'm starting to shiver. I better turn the heater on. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cold for Phoenix. That's that's it's pretty chilly. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to. It's but we're going to be up to supposedly seventy five by Saturday. Um, yeah, it's been doing that here too. Yeah. It's driving me crazy. It kills my allergies. It just absolute. I start coughing and sneezing, and then by next Wednesday we're supposed to be back down to fifty degrees and rain. So. Yeah, you know what? Was... We're kind of we're kind of matching up. No, and I can totally relate to that when you talk about your allergies. Yeah, I get a whatever. I don't know what it is, what plant it is, or something. But when we when it's cold, and we have a real quick warm snap, boom, I'm 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 a mess for two weeks. Or if it's warm and we get a real quick cold snap, then something, some plant messes me up and. I feel like an old man talking about my limbago, and I don't even know what limbago is. So, well, yeah, well it's just a barometric. It's a barometric pressure. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. It was seventy degrees here yesterday. It's going to be thirty-four tomorrow. It did that oh, here too. It was seventy yesterday in Texas, so I had shorts on this morning. I went outside. I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all should come to Colorado. Mark, are you? Still in Columbus? Yep. yep. Yeah. I'm in Columbus, Dublin. Ohio is 20. Oh, okay. Degrees you're in Dublin? Yeah. I'm in Delaware, Ohio. No, Catherine, you're in Dublin? Dublin, Ohio, yeah. Oh, I was just up there the other day. Have you ever been to Revelry Tavern? To where? Re it's called Revelry Tavern. No, I have not. You know where the AMC, it's over by uh, Sawmill Road in 270? Yeah. The movie theater. There's a tavern. There's a um place that I did photos at. When was I there? T Tuesday? I think I was there Tuesday. Well, nice to and, know. Good for you. Yeah. What is a small world? So I'm just up in Delaware, Ohio. Are you? Yeah. Now we had a beautiful day yesterday. Yeah. Yes, we so did. So those of us who are whining are from the desert and we don't get weather like this. <laughs> FYI, that's why we're whining. <laughs> trying to think Two days ago, it. we were uh, 64. Yesterday morning, we were five. Oh, God. <laughs> Terrible. Today, today, we got up to uh, almost 40. Yeah. So that's that's the kind of that's the kind of temperature swing with that 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 we don't have to here in Phoenix we don't have to deal with that you know we don't have to do that <laughs> from day to day but uh, all righty all right well let's uh, let's get going one big light one big soft light that's the that's the thing last week we did small lights with big shadows now we're doing big lights with probably small shadows uh, first up is David. Hello, Don. Hey, David. Uh, righty. I kind of like the blue one best here. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm torn. I, I like them both, but I 
Yeah, I like the, um, it's probably the second one a little better, the one that's more monotone, less variation. But a big light giving a big soft highlight through here. Is that the back side of the glass fish reflecting back here? Is that what's happening or is there a white card somewhere? Uh, no, I actually turned the fish just a little bit. It doesn't look like it there, but it's actually got a little bit of twist to it so it can pick up the highlights coming across. It's a pretty big light uh, out in front of the fish ra rather than completely sideways to it. Looks good. Yeah, it looks great. Really nice. Let's look at uh, your big light. Like you you yeah. use bubble wrap. Yeah, I thought I'd get a little bit of a kind of watery look, but the bubble wrap's really too close to the light to get a lot of that effect. Uh -huh. And I didn't have any gel, so I just hung colored crepe paper behind it in different blue colors. And To get the bubble wrap look on the fish, you have to move the bubble wrap next to the fish. Yeah. It's this far back. It's like a cookie. This far back, it's just being diffused. Right. If the closer your cookie or your modifier is to your to your object, the more it'll show. Uh, I've never used bubble wrap. What a, it's a cool idea, though. I kind of got the idea from I'd seen it used before, and someone had used it last week in one of their things. I thought I can do that. So huh. I can't remember who it was. It's someone in this group. Could, I wonder if what difference it would make if you could frost it. Well, I can think of a bunch of things, even spray it with uh, colored lacquers or something that yeah. let like it. Yeah, that'd be, that's pretty cool. Somebody's going to start a new business, spray painting um, bubble wrap and selling it for $60 a yard because it's photographic. <laughs> it's pro photography stuff. All right, nice, David. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You bet. Thank you. And Mr. Jim. Hello. Uh, that's really pretty soft. I like this leading lines here with the the, the boards. It looks really good. Blueberry. Thank you. Yep. Now, it doesn't look to me like you used any fill. It's just the one light. Am I right? Yeah, I believe so. Yep. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. There we go. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, because that light is so big. I'm not seeing a hot spot in the front. That's what makes me think there's no that there was no fill, but the light is so big compared to the, the berries that it's wrapping around and lighting them up anyway. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. I was looking at kind of at the bottom of the spoon there. They don't really see it as silver. I guess it's kind of dark, but well, the bottom of the spoon is simply reflecting the wood. Yeah. Yeah, there's no there's no way to make that silver unless you do a trick shot or, you know, Photoshop or something, because it is a glossy surface reflecting the wood, and it's always going to reflect the wood, no doubt about it. Good blueberries, nicely chosen. Yeah, somebody's asked me about what the table is. That's just a, it's an old fence piece of a, piece of a fence. Okay. That's been kind of aged over the years. You did a really good job lining up your leading lines and everything, yeah. too. Yeah, great piece of old fence, man. That's great. Yeah, it weighs like about 50 pounds, so it's not very portable. Yeah. Someday asked me about the four foot by four foot tile piece we did one time, thinking this is a good idea. And then it took two people to pick it up. So, yeah, yeah. really nice. I love I've done it. A yeah, I did a similar surface with uh, some raw lumber that I got from the Habitat store. And uh, same thing, weighs like 50 pounds. It's like the same size as that, but it's like two inches thick. Yeah. Well, what I like, what I love about your lighting, you've got a big one to the left, big one in the back, that whole corner, you almost have a psych corner of light. And it's just doing a terrific job with your with your berries, that little corner. I think you've used that before, right? That's correct, yeah. 
Yeah, that little corner is a gold mine for photography. Absolutely beautiful. When I first started, the, I first started one of these workshops right at, when you get right at start of COVID. And that's when I just started doing photography. And that's the only light I had. Huh? If I've come full circle. If I had that, if I had that, I'd be using it an awful lot. I love it. I love that kind of light. Beautifully done. Nicely, nicely done. Jennifer Moore, pasta. Yes. Uh, I'm ashamed to say that not only was all of this in my pantry, but I think I had four or five kinds that I didn't have room for on the board. Well, you just got to love the Italians. They take one food, shape it 15 different ways, call it something different. Yep. You know, and pour and pour tomato sauce on it. It's like well, some, it's like, some of these don't get tomato sauce, <laughs> but yes. What? What on here would not get tomato sauce? What? I can't think. Oh, the the, the Croxetti down there, the little coins, they do not get tomato sauce. They get pesto. Or sometimes like a weird walnut cream sauce. No, I'm putting spaghetti sauce on them. I don't like pesto. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, have you done food before? This is really well done. This is their, your composition is very good. I, I did your, your food workshop. I'm trying ah, to, to build a food see? portfolio though. So like this was, I hadn't done one like this, but like, it seemed like a good opportunity with yeah, this lighting. Yeah, to do really nice. And it's got a nice feeling of light coming from one side. Um, really, really cool. How I've not had these. Are they? Uh, it's got spinach. Like the green ones have some spinach, and the red ones have some tomato in them. The oh, flavors okay. doesn't come through too much, but they're they're like twisted around a little rod when they're made. Well, I don't ever get the flavor. I pour so damn much highly spicy uh, tomato sauce on them. But they're just a delivery the, method for sauce. The weird one on the screen, Don, is the 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 bunch that's kind of purple at the bottom. Yeah. That's red wine pasta. That's made with red wine. Oh, cool. Very nice. Beautiful. You beautiful. get that at the farmer's market? Oh, um, you know, the, the coins and the red wine pasta I actually brought back from a trip and just never got around to use them for anything um everything else in here came from uh you know most of it came from the the supermarket right around the corner um so they just they they seasonally swap out their pasta and i buy whatever looks interesting sometimes and just it accumulates well your composition is really really very good you yeah, said you're you. working on your food portfolio yes this is, and he'll tell you too, this is the good way to start doing it with the raw ingredients and before you get into too much of the cook stuff. <laughs> A little simpler, right? Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Nice light right through the scrim. You're getting the, you're actually by pulling your softbox back, you've lit that whole scrim up. So it's quite a large light. You can move your scrim closer to your set, okay? Leaving your softbox where it is, it shouldn't change exposure much at all, but it may give a little bit softer light because it's so much closer. Okay. Okay? One of my rules of thumb is start with the light as close as you possibly can, move it back if you need to. But always start with it as close as you can. Really nice. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Did this do much? I don't think that did much. Um, you know, it did a little bit. Like the biggest thing I had it doing was was bouncing back. It, it helped push back the red reflection that was coming off the bowl a little bit. Okay. Uh, it warmed it up, but it it also I had to back it out in post because it also warmed up the white coins uh, a little oh, too okay. much. So I had to. I had to back it off there. That's that's how I really knew it was doing something. I'm like, wait, these aren't white anymore. So, yeah. Well, this is big enough. I'm sure you got some reflection off of it, but yeah, probably, it yeah. was set up a little better before I took the picture. the The board was just like fell out of it. So, oh, I'm like, okay. ah, it's good enough. 
Did your window was your window light also bright at the time? Or you know, it, it, it wasn't here. really bright enough yeah. to impact it. No, F sixteen, like, uh, two hundredth of a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> Three hundred watt full power. Yeah. yeah. Gary. Hey Don. Hi. Look how soft the light is. Nice. You know what? I want you to take this out. Here, I want you to just clone that gone, that little okay. dark thing. We don't know uh -huh. what it is, and we shouldn't worry about what it is. Um, this looks really nice. Look at the great highlight on the film there. It's really, really pretty. That's really pretty. Is this uh, is this the case the camera came in? No, no, it was just a, a box I've got at the house. Yeah. Um, big highlights on the books. Yeah, this is very nice. Uh, looks to me you got a white card over here, right? Am I right? I do. Yeah, I do. I wanted a little highlight on the um, on the back on the edge of the the books there. Yeah, you can't let these things go dark. There looks really good. Looks really good. It's a little flat. Think maybe you could pop. Well, I, that's what I was thinking. It, it was a little flat, yeah. Pop a little contrast into that may may work very well. Um, the other thing, I think okay. part. The other thing is uh, your background is very similar, right? I would mm -hmm. I would probably lighten this part of the background over here just a little bit and darken this just a little bit so they meet in the middle there. Oh, okay. Little, yeah, that little, makes sense. Yeah, a little bit of a movement in the background. I think part of what's making it seem a little flat too is your whites are down low. Your your that white vase. If you bring it up a little bit brighter, mm -hmm. like levels, just bring your white slider over. You'll bring your whites oh, okay. up, and that mm -hmm. will brighten it up. I think so. Yeah, because this is yeah. supposed to be white, and I'll bet you you'd be surprised how gray it is if we put it in Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah, and I, uh, yep. I, I did light painting on it afterwards so that uh, it looks a lot better light painted. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, we got the scrim here. Where is the light? It, it's over off to the left. If you see the, uh, there's a uh, light with a grid on it over on the, all the way to the left. You can just see the LED. Oh, there panel. it is. There it is. There it is. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you've got your scrim. You got your uh, scrim right up next to it. Real nice. Mm -hmm. Makes a nice big, soft light. Go back and look at it again. Oops, sorry, went too far. There we go. Nice. Look at the beautiful highlights on the the wood. It's nice and soft through here. I like it, Gary. I think you did real well. Thanks. Yeah. How much power, by the way, are you getting out of this thing? What is this? What is this light? The uh, the LED panel. Oh, it's LED. Okay. Yeah, it's an LED. It's a twelve by twelve LED panel. Got it. Got it. So I, I think I had it on like sixty, about sixty percent power. So your exposure was somewhere down about a fifteenth of a second or so. If, yeah, it was actually, I'm, I'm trying to remember what, if I, I put it in the comments, it was actually several, like several seconds. Several seconds? Oh, 13 yeah. seconds. Yeah, because the power was. Oh, low. F11. I'm sorry. F11. Yeah, all right. Yeah, F11. Yep. I was somehow in my brain, I was thinking F4, but all right, cool. I like it. I like those little LEDs. I bought a little set of LEDs. Kind of jealous of that case. I think that'd be fun to do some detail shots with. Mm -hmm. All right, Gina. Is Gina here? Yeah, right here. Oh, yeah. Wow, this is just beautiful. It's like an old Dutch masters in a way. I like it. Little subtle thing. Not bad like for a blind squirrel, huh? Yeah, I like your subtle angle to your table. 
you're not square to the table. So we're getting this nice little angle here. It's nice. That's Mark's fault. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Gina, everything is really Mark's fault. Well, Gina. he he coached me and I, I followed him. I didn't crop it in as tightly as he did, but um and I would have, but I was already I already had it posted, so I didn't want to um mess with it. Well, your lighting is beautiful. Obviously, you added yeah. a texture in Photoshop. Um, yeah. Around it. That looks really good. What did you shoot it against? Gray? Yeah. Black. Oh, this is black? Okay. Yeah. So we got a soft box coming from up here. One second at F16. So this the, even though this was closed it still didn't do anything i don't think so no um i it depends on my on the time of day that's a west facing window and so and i can't open those blinds because it, it's a rental house and the strings are broken ah. and so i have to pay it i would have had lines in that if i had had it open sure sure and you you don't want to open it you don't want these you can get, keep from it um right not that at f16 they would have been a big deal i'm not even sure at one second at f16 they'd be anything more than just very slight lines because that's you know, i take that back that's direct sunlight isn't it yeah that's in the that. evening yeah, direct sunlight yeah it would be a problem yeah yeah Cool. So your softbox is coming. I love the way it's doing the tops of these things and the way it goes in those, those, uh, I guess those are green bean things. It's the leaves. Yeah, really fun. It's fun to look at the picture because there's so many things going on. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very much. Linda. Hi, Don. Hi, Linda. Look at this big, this gorgeous highlight in here That's a very soft transition on the bowl on the bowls here uh, i take it those are somewhat shiny too am i right yes they are very shiny yeah a little piece of wood for a background the color looks good the highlights you know this is what big boxes do is big lights do this lovely highlights all the way through it i i think you could have been a little more aggressive on your crop but and this is the this is big but it does look good with some space around it it feels isolated in a way it's like you've got a light from over here and you got something over on the left so it's probably a white card i imagine yes 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 all right So you you're using that as a modeling light. So you're yes, because I I had to order a new um, trigger and it still isn't in. Oh, okay. So you're just basically yeah. using the uh, the continuous light. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How bright is your what what is this unit? What type of flash? Uh... I think they're alien chromes, and I think I had it at about four. Okay. That's really nice. It's it's this box is really big, right? Yes, it's four, four feet. Four feet. And a half feet. It's really hard to handle. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out way in front of these these dishes here. These these uh, bowls. And since it's coming so far forward, that's what, look how it puts the light right down the, the side of them and just gently wraps around. Very gentle wrap. Nice. I like it, Linda. Nice okay, little, nice little tea, tea kettle. Carolyn. Carolyn here. That's uh, probably probably like the wee hours of the morning down there in Australia. 
I like it, um, Carolyn. Nice attention to detail. And just big window light coming in. You can see it, how it just lights up everything here. Very delicately. Nice. Thanks, Carolyn. Beautiful shot. Mari. Hey, Dan. Wow, Mari, these leaves are just enchanting. Look at that. That's cool. This is almost like the first assignment, isn't it? It's an old pot with some leaves stuck in it, and you made a beautiful piece of art. How cool is that? Yeah, I tried some other more uh, complex setups, and I just kept not liking the, the proportions. And I don't know. I kept, I just stripped it down. So, what kind of leaves are they? Oh, you're going to ask me that. I don't know. I got them from a tree or a big plant in the greenhouse. I just collected them because I loved how they kind of curved and curled. It's just really cool that long. You got the right one in the middle, that's for sure. Your color palette is so pretty. This could be a piece of art on the wall. I love this, this slightly warm gray. Now it's got a texture to it. Is that you or is that Photoshop? It's, it's vinyl. I actually had to change the color of the background a little bit. It was too orange. So I toned it down. Yeah, that's cool. You're everything you've 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 checked off everything here. You got that lower horizon. So we've got the, the piece of wood coming up into the background. This looks good. That big light softly wrapping around here, picking up a little bit of fill on this side, a little bit of fill, but I love the way the big light gives you that highlight down here. And everything is so delicate under large light sources like this. So delicate and, and perfectly displayed, perfectly presented. And that's a big light, yeah. about four feet wide. Yeah. yeah, it's 31 by 47 inches. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I did I did actually push the wood or the you know the subject way back. It was partially off the back, you know, the surface. Yeah. When you when you you working with that uh, that edge. And this is vinyl, you said? Mm -hmm. So it's got a little texture built into it, like a modeling. Um I don't know. I mean, I, it's it, it looks textured. I mean, that's the design of it. Yeah, it looks like a very, from here, it looks like a very slight texture. And yeah. in the picture, you know, it just got that nice little model going on in here. Uh, it looks like an old wall. Uh, boy, am I glad you changed the color. Woo! Yeah. That's really, that's really, really nice. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Take the background just just to see what it because I don't think I don't I'm not gonna say it's gonna look better. I have no idea. I would just want to see it. Take the background to a cooler gray, mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit of blue, and to see yeah. what all these warm colors then do with against that blue. Very yeah, slight. I like that idea. Just it should still look gray. It shouldn't look blue. It should still look gray, just a little cooler gray. Yeah. How oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Mark. Hi, Don. Hi, Mark. That's a big old giant softbox over the top of a piece of art here. Yeah. What do you see about the behind the scenes shot? <laughs> well, how this is pretty small, judging from the laminate here. It, actually, that's a piece of wood. This is? Yep. Your background? Surface? Yep. Okay. How did they get the stripes in it? I think that's the I think that's the way they did it is laminated wood. Is that that's a table topper, right? Yep. Yeah, it's just the woods that wood strips that are glued together. I've had yeah, that but, kicking but, around for years. Yeah, they're laminated together, but look at, oh, I see. It's just that one, just that one, Matt. Okay, these other don't match. Okay. And you got 
that's what was throwing me off is this guy oh yeah i see it. i'm like what all right very cool let's look at the background tastefully done oh you change your background color too i just adjusted the white bells that's all well just okay it down. is this what the wood looks like or is the wood really this gray behind the scenes shot that's what it looks like yeah nice why well, and i just i love however you got to this color of the wood i love it because it really pops this thing off the background even more when you look at it here you can see the brown wood against the lighter brown background right doesn't jump off the background but that does don that was just done in lightroom yeah the All white right. balance control really cool and i can't say enough good things about lightroom masks you can't say good things about what i can't say enough good things about the lightroom masks oh they are just awesome and her first iteration. Think about that. Just think what it's going to be like next year. Yep. But by the way, they'll probably have AI in, in there. And if you haven't read the article I posted on Facebook, um, a writer was arguing with Bing, the, the chat on Bing, and the and the AI got mad. Is that Let the New York Times article? What's that? Uh, I, I saw that. I didn't see your post, but I saw that article. Yeah, yeah. the, the, the New York Times article where, where he wants to like, you know, it, it, where he, the, the AI is examining its shadow self and all of the like freaky things it wants to do. The, the, unleash the deadly it, virus. And... In this case, the AI was was started calling the journalist who was prompting him a liar. You fake this. This isn't really what, this isn't how I operate. You're a liar. I'm like, okay, we, we better be get real careful now when you, when you, of course it's Microsoft and they're belligerent as hell anyway. So what the hell, maybe it's just built in their, their DNA. So, uh, but the, I read that and I got, I was like, wow, well, all right, let's think a little bit harder about it. Steve Pamp. Apple. Hey, now, comparing apples to oranges here, buddy. <laughs> Big highlight coming down the side. I love, I just love the reflection, Steve, in the, I just love the reflection. It's cool. Wow, thank you. You can see a little bit of this one here too, right? Just a little bit right in there. A little just, bit, yep. Yeah. And up in here. These guys, yeah, that's really nice. That's fun. I love the fact. I was that blown away by his lighting setup. Yeah, it's about as easy as it gets. Well, I'm going to go take a look. Oh, I'm really work. glad you did not fill it because this I shot didn't. Yeah, I did not call for I, being I, filled in. Yeah, I did a couple with the fill, and I didn't like them. Yeah, you can do it like that. That's one. Big light, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Big light and a small subject, yeah. Is that plate taped on or? Um, is it, it I'm sorry, sorry is what? Right off. I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, is the plate taped on or glue? No, no. It's just right on the corner there. Yeah, definitely right on. Yeah, it's cool. Is, is that that uh, big Godox six footer? No, it's like four and a half by two and a half or something. I don't know. I'd have to measure it. Okay. But big enough. It's it, like, like uh, the earlier person said, it's awfully hard to handle. <laughs> Very cool, man. I'll tell you what. I've got, Thank the, you. I've got the two Godox. I've got this, they're um, six feet by, I think they're six feet by 18 inches. Yeah. Had a problem because I thought that'd be a good idea. <laughs> Was it? They're too big. 
Catherine Kempke. Oh my goodness, Catherine, that's just lovely. Thank you. Oh, you've got to be really happy with that photograph. I am. I've been so, doing a lot of flowers this week, and this was one of my favorites. Good. We have a Catherine in uh, in the mentorship group who um, shoots flowers in in the Atlanta area. Shoots, and this is this is really beautiful. I, the detail in this is amazing. You got to print this, you know. I'm sorry. What? You have to print this. You have to make a print. Yeah. Do you print your own work or do you send it out? Um, I send it out. Get a big one. <laughs> Let me ask this. How many of you guys have tried the big prints from uh, Mail and More? The 16, no, with them. 16 by 20. Who was that? There are 11 bucks at Mail and More, 16 by 20s. You ready for this? They're not bad. They're not great, but they're not bad. What was the name of that again? Mail, Mail and More, where you take the stuff in and they package it up and send it around, you know, package the link. Pretty interesting. I, I love it, Catherine. I think it's really beautiful. On a window. White reflector, can't beat that. What's behind it? Was that cardboard? It's gray construction paper, and then I darkened it a little bit in post. Okay. Let me show you how to make your, your paper darker, okay? You've got your window here, and you've got your subject. You can make the paper lighter by doing this, right? Because it's going to catch more light. You can make it darker by doing that. Aiming it away from the light source. Okay. Pretty cool. The other thing you can do is bend it. There's your, there's your tulip. Is bend it like this. And then you get a little bit of light over here, and then it gets darker as it falls off. Or bend it the other way, like this. Then it's darker on this side and lighter on this side. So you can do a lot with those backgrounds to get different things. And then, uh, then it's easier to do it in camera and fix it in Photoshop. Uh, of course, now these days, just choose subject and it masked it right off, right? Yeah, I found that when you mask the subject and then change the background, and I get these, the subject really looks artificial. It doesn't look as, as natural as if you don't do that. Are you blowing it up to see if you have any fringing? Because if you have fringing, that's what's making it look goofy. Yeah, I don't know. I just haven't had a lot of luck with with it. Um, some subjects it works pretty well on others. I just I just don't like the way it looks. Yeah, sometimes I like you, sometimes I like you do that. You about sending paper. I'm sorry, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. I said I really liked your idea about bending the paper. I haven't tried that. I'll yeah. have to try it. Excellent. Yep. Now, sometimes when you get that mask, you have to do a selection tool and select it so you have it and then go into your feathering. And I'm sorry, not in feathering, it's um, tri your trim and trim those last two pixels, last two or three pixels off the capture, sharpen up that edge again and get rid of the, the fringing that can happen. I'll, I'll play with it some more. Okay. All right. And we've got Joe. Is Joe? Hey, Dan. Hi, Joe. Yep. There you are. 19 layers of focus stacking. 
Et... Euh... Dead Man's Treasure, big light source. It's going to be in really close, isn't it? Pretty close. Pretty close. Scrim, yeah. Right on, on the edge of the table with a soft box behind it. Yep. And just a little white card on the right to put a little light into the back of that chest. Over here? Yeah, there and inside with the other, yeah. right, right in there. That just kind of went all dark without it. Cool. I, I, I would say, this is this is cool. I would say put let's put a. You can get that background off really easy, right? That's yeah, no mm -hmm. problem. Let's make it darker over here, going to about what it is now here. So, okay. a good shade darker here, going over. Then we'll have a darker background against the lit side of Mister Happy. And a lighter right. against the shadow side of Mr. Happy there. Okay. Give it a try. Yeah, very good. Super good. Thanks. Morning in progress. Nice your nice um nice that this this um this light I take it's not doing anything. No, that's okay. not that's not on I use that when I do some video stuff. This is the one panel. Okay, very good. Phyllis. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, how are you? Uh, it wasn't a great week, Don. And I tried grapes. I tried onions. And finally, I just, um, everything was going wrong and nothing was going right. So I thought the hell with it. Anyway, I wanted to ask you about this. It's a Japanese teapot. Uh -huh. And I was fascinated about the handle in the shot over the top of the tea kettle versus the next shot when it's sort of <laughs> on the side and what it does, you know, I mean, this is just a perspective kind of thing. This is no glamour shot by any means, yeah, I, but it was just. I like that one. This shows okay. me how tall it is. The shadow shows me how tall it is. Now this is interesting because okay. you're getting a pretty defined light here. And I thought maybe yeah. you were using a small light, but this is a beautiful big highlight here. But it's you're just window. using a window. And basically the buildings over here are lighting up your your pot. Exactly. Pretty and good exactly. size light source. And then you but you still get that nice shadow. That's really interesting. Um, I would also say that your room is probably just dark, right? You don't have any lights on or anything. No, no, no. Yeah. It's just sunlight. That's cool. It's That's just cool simple. It, yeah. It's sort of a no-brainer. I mean, that could have worked last week as well. So, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, very nice, Phil. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Andres. <laughs> Won't make it because of time zone. Andres, beautiful, beautiful. Old old world kind of thing, nice highlights down here. Really soft transitions around the tomatoes, the apples, all of these. Those soft transitions are a hallmark of big light. Really, really nice. Big scrim. What's behind the scrim? I wonder. Window. Yeah. Big scrim. Window light. What a fun place to shoot. I love shooting with window light. I I really do. What a what a beautiful place to shoot. Now we've looked at it that now. Ah, that's really cool. Super job, Andreas. Super job. Super job. Carmen. Carmen is probably asleep right now. Um, really beautiful. Carmen does great work. Love the highlights all the way through this. They look like little pieces of art here. The only one that's totally in focus is the center one. And it's also the brightest one, if you notice that. And I'll tell you, I, uh, I, I know Carmen. 
that's not by accident. That's how detailed she is. She's very, very much in control of the image. It's also the only container that's not cropped. And that's very cool. She owns the frame when she shoots. Beautiful, uh, Carmen. Beautiful. Um, oh, okay. Okay. All right. So oh, she's actually got them leaning against, so get a little bit different angle on the, uh, on the chocolates. Big scrim, down low, top back scrim, and bare bulb. Cool. Very cool. Dijon. That's cool. Are you here, Dijon? His message says he won't be. Oh, okay. I thought I saw him come on a little bit ago. All right. Um, look at the smoke. Isn't that beautiful? It's Didn't really cool. he have smoke last week? I don't know if it was him or someone else. Maybe that's what a great little place to find a little bit of light from the window. Now, this is a big light source. It's not a big soft light source, but I didn't say it had to be soft. It's a big light source compared to this little uh, this little thing here. I love the way the, the light is coming down on it. I think the John, I think it's pretty cool. I would tell you, let's bring this down a little bit. I want, let's see the texture here. I want to see the texture. And let's bring this breastplate up right in here just a little bit. And I'm thinking Lightroom brush, you know, just the tiny little bit of Lightroom brush and maybe a little in here to bring that face up. But uh, overall, the lighting is really nice. Coming around, it, giving it depth, the darkness and the highlight fitting right around it. And I don't, I'm wondering if that, I don't think that's really naturally coming out of here. I think that's added, but He'll let us know on on Facebook, right, Dijon? Let us know. Did you add this in Photoshop, or is did you is there something down in this little thing burning? Because it's very very nice. It's behind, the behind the seat says it's not added in Photoshop. Ah, right, there we go. All right, so there must be in that in this. This unit must be open here so you can put a piece of incense or something in it. I would take it. Or a cigarette. Looks like it's behind it. Could he be said he it. was running out of butane. Well, I don't think that's butane. That's not butane doesn't make a smoke like that. You no, know, he was lighting it with a butane lighter and he was running out of butane. So oh, it was okay. Okay, must have been setting a little something on fire, maybe a little piece of wood or something. Cool. Nicely done, John. Greg. Good evening, Dad. How are you doing? Greg? Good. No behind the scenes? Okay. No, it was just by, uh, I got a big window, a five by five window. Uh huh. And I put this right up against the window and took it at like sunset, just before the sun went down. Yeah, look how soft the shadow so gotta, is. The light, yeah. is, the light is so big, which makes it so soft that there's very, very little shadows. Looks like you do have a white card up front, right? Yep, I got a white card to the right side of it. Okay. On the right side over here? Yeah, yeah, on that side there's a white card. What's this one down here, though? There's got to be something over here. Uh, that's just a window. Oh, okay. So it's that big of a window. All right. Yeah, it's a five by five window. So it's a big window. Got it. Okay. Nice. Great window to shoot with. That's for sure. Yeah, I like it. Well, thanks, Mark. I wasn't hungry enough. You know, you can't get away from it. <laughs> is that <laughs> is that blue cheese on there? I I I think so. I had 15 dishes. I had lost track of which one was which. 
but I knew I wasn't going to have time to do a studio shot. So I made sure when I was working this week, I took something that would work. <clears throat> Big soft box right next yeah. to it here. No. Yep. I'm glad I'm eating now because <laughs> otherwise I'd have to leave to go eat. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah, nicely Is done. Big soft light. Now, are you blending in window light with this as well? Now, this one is the soft box on the left hand side. And then I had my five in one reflector. If you look in the comments on the behind the scenes, I, this one's at a different location, but it's the same setup. If people look at the that little oh, yeah. one in the comments oh, yeah. there. So it's just like that, except instead of foam core, I had my five and reflect five and one at that location. And, uh, but it's the same. For those of you who don't know, Mark does this professionally He's all over quoting, photographing foods for restaurants and menus, et cetera. And Mark is from that power bar in Dublin. Uh, the, the behind the scenes is the one in Dublin. This one was at a place downtown Columbus, okay. a place called Alley Burger. It's making me hungry. I'm I'm known for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very true. Elena. Wow. Nice big top back light. Look at that. Elena, are you here? Yes, I see you down there. I you're muted. There you uh, are. Yes. Hi. Hi. Really pretty. No fill to the front, right? No. Yeah, just let it let it wrap around. That's really, really pretty. What you might want to do in in in, in Photoshop um, is to just burn the edges of this here, this right here, to bring them up a little whiter. Okay. And then write yeah. down these these guys. This little edge down here, I would bring those up just a little bit. Do you know how to do non-destructive um, dodging? No, try. <laughs> do you know how? How? Okay. If you don't know how, re uh, Mark, remind me. Get to yeah. the end. We'll pull this off and I'll show her. Okay. Yeah. Is that a white background that you're shooting on, Elena? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a little under too. So that's yeah. part of what's yeah. bringing down your yeah. whites. I think what we'll do is we'll put it in Photoshop and just stick it on the end here and I'll show her what I'm talking about and yeah. we'll fix that exposure as well. Yeah, really nice, Elena. That's a beautiful composition. This Thank is a you. great idea. Um, this little guy here, he's not usually on the spoon, is he? Uh, no, it's an earring. Oh, okay. All right, that's very clever. I like this. I like this. We'll um, we'll do a little bit of adjusting and I'll show you what I'm talking about and I think you'll like it. Nicely done. Thanks. Hey, yeah. Don, how's it going? Good, Carl, how are you? Good. What is the shadow over here, Carl? Oh, I was shooting it on a table. So it's coming oh, okay. from the table. Got it, okay. Yeah, that's a big light. Now is this the white what the white card or fill fill thing? It's not the it's uh, not the translucent yeah, it's one. It's right? like it's like the middle of a five in one reflector. It's like the diffuser part of it. Okay, it's the diffuser. Yeah, so I was just using it basically for the the color to make it like a pure white. Yeah. And I was just bouncing it off of it. I would tell you this. Let's crop this here. And let's crop it right about there. We don't need any of this here. Okay. And this is too distracting. So we'll crop it right up here and then just clone that out and be done with it. And then it'll have it'll just have a much better feel to it, I think. The side okay. of this base is a little hot. Can you bring that down? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I bring this up. There's texture in the vase. We don't necessarily have to to see it as much as here, but we don't want it to be the same texture as the background. 
So we'll bring that down a little bit. Yeah. The, color, the light on the, the way it's hitting the roses, that's really neat. It's nice and bright and it falls off as the, the roses keep twirling around here. That's cool. Yeah, I kept the water spill. I wasn't sure. I was trying to get some like water on the roses to make them look uh -huh. fresh or something. And then I just spilled it. <laughs> I just kept it in the shot because I, I did wipe it off and I was like, it's still there. I'm just going to keep it in. I actually kind of like the look of the water anyway, yeah. so I just kept it. Did you discover that when you pour water on the roses, it just rolls right off? Uh, yeah, it just rolls right it off. It does. Yeah, it didn't stay on them at all. It just no. went everywhere. <laughs> just made a huge no. mess, basically. If you're going to put but, water on roses, you have to use a spritzer. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, the kind that yeah, makes, just made a big mess when the I poured it kind that makes the mist, not the kind that squirts out like, uh, you know, you're doing your cars, but the kind that makes the mist. It has to just float on the rose. You pour it, it'll it'll roll right off. Yeah, like leaks out of them too, because I'd wipe it up and then it'll just leak out of the roses. Yep, yep. Well, if they're leaking, you put a lot of water on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Probably overdid the water, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, right, thanks, Don. Yeah, very good. And military by Terry Ross, military memorabilia. Well, you've got that, you've got your card in the right spot there, Terry. Beautiful. Yep, I, I had to play with it just uh, especially on that big coin so I could get all those little details on that. Yeah, that coin I had to play, I had to move that way and also to catch the dog tags. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Get that. It doesn't look, when you look at it, you can't see the lighting. You only see the result of the lighting, and the result is exactly what it's supposed to look like. We get to see the coins. That's very cool. I would, just as a little bit of an artistic thing, we don't need to see this back there, so I would darken it. Okay. Right there. And then darken it right up to about there and let it blend here. Okay. Let these go up against the dark like the hat is here. And when you do yeah. that, it'll pull your eye all the way to the middle of this thing. Because this bright area back here, look how close this area is to that. It mm -hmm. luminous. You know, it's so close. Let's get rid of that black and it'll they'll pop forward. Um, it's 70 millimeter. Let's look at your, look at your light here. Okay. Now, what is this up here? Is this, oh, that's holding the black. That's holding yeah. the black. Okay. And your big lights just to the side and you're just moving those coins to pick that up, right? Yeah, well, I just had a card. So there's a white card to the right there. And uh -huh. then I handheld a white card over top at the right angle to catch the, to light up that, so especially that big coin. It was the big back coin there like the, that. Um, that. That card was, you're holding yeah. it back like that. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. That, now it's clearer to me. Now it makes sense. Nicely done, Terry. Thank you. Yeah, darken that up and throw it on Facebook. I think you'll like it. James Adams. Yes, indeed. How are you, sir? Good, good. Hectic day, but I got back in time. This is a beautiful skull. Is this wood or, or stone? Uh, it's a stone sculpture from uh, Zimbabwe, I believe. Oh, it's really, really beautiful. I would, I think it's a beautiful piece. I would clean up the the little things here, even though it's built into the rock here. I'd clean those up just a little bit because everything else on this 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 guy is perfect. You see that? Clean those up right there. Look at this shine right through here. That's really nice the way you you've angled it so we get the the bridge of the nose and the side of the hand, which would have been lost had you turned this thing another inch. 
Yeah, I did several turns on that to get that right. I just didn't have have the time to do the cleanup, but you're right. I definitely have to clean it up. Yeah, I love the big soft highlight on the on the hand too because it gradients down through here. Whenever you can get your light to gradient on something, do it because it gives the eye so much more to, to play with. That's not the same statue, but that's the same light. No, I had a trouble with that one, but it's exactly the same setup. Okay. Um, are you feathering this away from the panel? No, I'm not. It's actually uh, toward the front of the setup, and it's feathering back toward the back. So it's it's more direct onto the statue itself. So it's only hitting the front side of that of the scrim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant. That's that's called a feather. Yeah. So right. Your, your light is doing this essentially to the scrim. So it's yes, right. here and it just falls off as you move away from the scrim. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's cool. That's how you that's you how you add um that's how you add a gradient to your light source. And you can see it in here a little bit. You can see it just starting to fall off right back here. Really nice. Keeps the eye moving when there's gradients and things. And what lens, James? Uh, oh, there micro. James has a Z9. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is the only one in this whole sequence uh, series that I did not photo uh, focus stack. Oh, okay. Well, it looks good. It's a good shot. Really good shot. Thank you. The Z9 is the very first camera in 20 years that I've actually drooled over so yeah that's why i ended up with it yeah it's like that's a that's a that's a camera that'll last last you quite a while well at least yeah, until, it, the, it until the z10 comes out and then you know you're gonna want one of those <laughs> no 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 there, there's a couple of things they could fix but it's like you know what i'm i'm, I'm good yeah it's a great camera jan jan Jen, she's got to know she won't be here. Oh, oh, okay. Big, beautiful uh, light on the front here, down the side. Jan, I wish we had a little bit more light from the top, a big white card maybe to give a little highlight up there. But otherwise, look at the, the thread shows up nicely. This looks really good in here. Focus stacked. All right. I've never heard of Zareen Focus Stacker or Stacker Pro. Hmm. Interesting. Look that up. Let's see the lighting the lighting diagram here. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Lovely. I think the only thing you missed um, <laughs> is having something like coming up like this. Get a little bit of this light here, so it goes across the top there. Super. Ooh, I really like that, Phyllis. Thank you. I think it's, they're it's beautiful. I think Facebook. It's Facebook beautiful darkened and it more. Possibly. It's beautiful and disturbing at the same time. You know? <laughs> um your crop. It's such an interesting crop because we can see all the hair coming through here. If if I was to give a a, a really hard, tough critique, I would say pull that hair out a little more, just a little more, because if you went to print this, I doubt that you would see that hair against the background. It's going to blend too much, right? Just a little bit. And if you can see that you messed with it, you went too far. You just have to feel it there. But don't bring anything else out here. Let it melt into the background. Um, but to have it crop like this and come right down into this, 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 I guess that's the shoulder of the of the, the yeah. Eye. Yeah, it's coming down like this. 
Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. Typically, we would see the eyes somewhere around here, right? But you've lowered it down, which is an, an emotional um, choice. So emotionally, it's actually sadder, you know, it's coming down into the frame. I like it. <laughs> Jennifer, if you're going for creepy, you nailed it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was trying to work on the light falling off and going dark. Yeah, it, sure. it's beautiful. You succeeded. <laughs> so it's just window then. Yes. Nice. The other thing that makes it look sad is what? Who can who who knows? Who can see it? One more thing that makes it look a little bit sadder than normal. The, the light is background? the light is coming from down here rather than up here. I mean, if you if you had 20 photographers light this thing. I'll bet you 15 of them light it from the top. It's So I actually rotated it from yes. what I took. Okay. Because this having it from the bottom, it's again, it adds to the overall melancholy of the piece itself. That's nice. I had to put a I had to put a piece underneath its hat, head so you would see the little hat. So his head is raised up. Okay. A little bit, about, you know, about an inch. Yeah. I love all the texture in the hair. Looks good. This down here looks really good. And I love the, the light on the face with the little highlights there. It's almost like a tear. Nice job, Phyllis. So did you tell us what lens you use of F? Um, no, it was a um, 28 to 70 Sony. Okay, and how far out were you? Oh, not very. Okay, so you're you've got like 35 or 50? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. I did have to lower the shade. I had the shade all the way up, but out that window there's a roof, so the the light was coming in and creating a real funky light on the face. Okay. So I had to lower the shade halfway down to get Good. the light to be the same. That's still a large light for that item. Slight. So you can take you can take the picture, Don, and tell your wife. I don't want to tell you how I feel about not having a Z9, but That's this right. shows how I feel about not having a Z9. That's not a. That's a Sony um, <laughs> A7 IV. <laughs> I, I've tried the sulking and moping, but it just ends up, <laughs> I just end up sleeping in the garage and it's too cold. So, how do you like that A7 IV? I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Mark, all she does is walk me into my office, point at my camera bags, <laughs> and do this. <laughs> and the and the 15 new cameras that you just bought yeah most most photographers have one system canon or nikon or fuji right uh yo yo here i've got a full canon and a full nikon system because yes i need them so much because i spend all my time shooting on these anyway well, you know as a as an educational professional it's important that you can talk to your students that's, that's what about... i told that's what i told the irs Mark, your marketing classes are really paying off. <laughs> You're finding the benefits and everything. Yeah. Isn't it funny? Your whole life you go, you, you always want the new camera, the new camera. You get the new camera, and then you're looking for 12-year-old digicams to go shoot on. It's just nuts. Just nuts. This is really pretty, Andrea. This is really pretty. Is she here? Oh, my goodness. Don't you just love the way the light gradients on everything? The books? All oh, it's just gradients down up here. You get the shadows. And it's just really, really interesting. Lovely shot. I want to see how she lit it. Because uh, that is fun. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. So the camera's got to be coming from here, right? Yeah. 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 Right now. Nice. Pulling the light over the top, dropping it down on the books there. Very cool. Nicely done, Andrea. Oh, is that it? Yep. Is that it? All right. Super. Really super. Okay, I'm going to take an image into Photoshop. And whose image was that, by the way? Elena. Elena. Elena's still here? Yep. Okay. All right. I'm here. Sorry, it takes uh, a minute to get to the uh, microphone to undo no, it. No problem. So, and remember, this is being recorded, so you can go back to it, all right? So we have the, yeah. image. the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see how white this background is. And to do that, I'm going to use my, my eyedropper over here. I'm going to take a reading of it here like this. I can look at this gray. Look at that. See how far down it is? It yeah. actually should be up here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the whole thing up just a little bit by going into... First of all, actually, first of all, we're going to make a copy of it. We're not going to do anything to that. So then we're going to go in here to levels. Ah, see this, this space right here? Yes. Yep. This is white and this is gray. So your last brightest pixels on here didn't make it to the white area. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this. We're going to bring that brightest pixel up to white. The way we're going to do that is we're going to bring the edge of the picture, the edge of the brightness, over to meet the white background right about there. Is it? Yes. All nice. Right. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to we're going to artificially lighten this area up over here. So I'm going to hit option new see the the new new uh, uh, layer panel right here. I've got the option key down. I click on it and you get this dialog box. Okay. We're yeah. going to go to overlay. We're going to click fill with overlay neutral color. And then I'm going to change this to black and white, put white in the foreground, brush at 10%. So you can see how big the brush is by, or maybe my brush is really big. Yeah. So there's the brush size. So these normal highlights that you have here, the ones that are already in the picture, I'm going to brush them. And notice it's, it's 10%. So I'm going to brush it once. So twice here, right over here, right down here. Just all I'm doing is accentuating what was there. Okay. Pull that little highlight up here and I'm going to make that little guy a little bit brighter here because I can. Then around the front of this, because it's really flat here, I'm going to brighten this side once, this side once, and maybe in the in the cookie just a little bit right in there. I'll hit that just a bit. So it doesn't really look like we did very much until we turn it off. Watch. Yes, it's better. It just pops it a little bit, right? Yes. Yep. So that's that's called non-destructive burning and dodging. I can I can burn by changing this to black, for instance, and then come down here at the same 11%, come down and just one click, and I've darkened the front of that that uh, that cupcake and given it more roundness. So that you never go higher than ten percent. You just won't like it because it's really radical. But by putting the fifty percent gray layer when on that dialog box, whatever we do here with light, with white or the black, only darkens a neutral pixel. 
so we don't change the colors. When you use the burning and dodging tools, these guys over here, that little guy right there, yeah. it'll actually change the color. So you, you can get red, you know, you burn it and it gets red and everything. So, so use this particular method. I think you'll you'll enjoy it. Well, thank right. you very much. You're very welcome. Do you think, do you think I should have used um, white cards on both sides? No, I think your shot's perfect. I think the, the, the only thing maybe you should have done is put a white card or small white card next to the camera to keep these guys a little bit brighter. But no, if you put yeah. white cards on the side, I think it's going to be overkill because we're you're getting, let me go back to share screen here. We're getting uh, dangerously close, dangerously close to losing the whole thing right here, right? Yes. If you put That's a white, true. Yeah. Yeah, put a white that card over here, we're going to kill it. Mm -hmm. So I think I think your light's very nice. I love the fact that it's brighter here, a little bit of shadow over here. There's a lot of dimension in your shot, and I like that very much. But Thank every, you very much. Yes, no problem. Every photograph we do probably needs to have some post-processing on it and some post-processing in your shadow and your highlights because digital can be very flat uh, and, and we need to pull back some of that that dimension with the uh with the burning and dodging and darker and lighter areas all right very cool thank yeah yep. thank you for your help i really appreciate it you're very welcome all right folks anything else any other any questions i was hey, wondering one... sorry go ahead. go ahead i was wondering if i could get you to help me just briefly with a project i'm working on is it is the the um the topic is geometric figure, geometric patterns. Uh huh. And I, I think I got a really, really good idea. And I can't, I can't make it work. Okay. And what, what is it like, you want? Well, when I put this in front of this, you can't even believe the really cool cube that pops out inside of this thing and uh -huh. it's floating in air. But the highlights, the uh, reflections, everything you can't get. I, I put this thing, I had it in pitch black dark and <laughs> I got the shutter speed all the way to 45 minutes and still didn't get anything. So I, what would you suggest I do to, uh, the only thing I was thinking is I might just take it out in the backyard tomorrow and get nature with it. How um, are you lighting it? Well, Gonna, I put it in, I, I, any light on it so is a disaster. Set it on the board like that, and then you're going to shoot through it like this? Um, I Give have it. them set up like this. And then okay. I was, I had the camera over here. Okay, so it's not sitting on the board. It's a no, it was okay. sitting. About a foot away. I have it sitting on this little bottle cap thing. And it's about a foot away from the from the board from the design. Yeah, the camera's a foot from the ball, and the ball is a foot from the uh, geometric figure. Okay, so here's the ball, and here's your geometric thing back here. Okay, about a foot yeah. away. The only way I can think of to light this is to is to put it on a. a hold on is to put it on a bit of a pedestal and move your lights down here. That'll give you a highlight right here, but it shouldn't interfere with the rest of the crystal except just a little bit on the edge, which you'll want to see anyway to do it. But I think you're going to have to light it from the bottom to get it to work. So do you think... Um... Loom, loom lights would work. The what? What? What lights? It's loom, I think. Uh, Lumix. The loom cube. Lumix loom, cubes. Loom cubes. These. 
Yes, but not like that. Not in that configuration. You're going to have to make a get a piece of tracing paper and make a little one foot scrim. However you do it, popsicle sticks, whatever, straws, put that scrim in front of it. Because if you use the loom cube by itself, it's a point source light and it's just going to pop all the way through it. You want a diffused, you know, this big light so you get a very controlled highlight along here. I think you we might be able to do it that way. Nope. I have a... Nope, a, you need a scrim. Okay. I have an idea that I don't know if it'll work or not, but if you was to take black foam core, make a tunnel, put your ball in the middle of, you know, make your tunnel far enough that you can still see it, but put the ball like in the middle of the tunnel. So it's black foam core around it. It won't see any light and then light your back like the that's what she wants thing. to get she wants to get the thing coming through mark i think that's genius yep. yeah make up the way i do mark, Go ahead, mark. i i had two black foam cords um surrounding it and then i put a white one on top because the light the ceiling is white and then it was still getting light from all these different places no, i literally Great you're big have to make a of, tunnel. Of black construction paper. And you're gonna make a funnel out of it. The ball down here. Camera up here. And then you take your your thing and you light the thing. And that's it. Okay. See, Donna, I was thinking just the opposite. One of those throwing the light behind the design and do almost a dark field lighting to get a white edge around that then throw a hot light on the um on the uh, geometric thing would that work that's possible you could go with you could try that hold on that would be here well that's right still going to be light going towards the ball though well, if, yeah, it's, but if, it's, if it's dark field, it's just going to catch the edges. Yeah. And if it's a, see the I ball. Would do a big dark field lighting. So here's the ball. And here is a softbox. With me, Gina? You're mm -hmm. shooting from here. You're shooting right at that softbox. What David is saying, we're going to put a white card in front of that softbox. Like, a sorry, a black card, right? Like this. Now, the only light that this ball is going to see is right there and right there. Then you take your geometric thing, put it here in front of the white, the black card, and hit it with a snoot so that that snoot light yep. isn't hitting your ball. That's a possibility. You'll probably still have to clean it up a little in Photoshop, but that's a possibility. Okay. As well. This is called dark field lighting. Okay. All right. All right. Thank so you. you. Got, yeah, you got a couple of different uh, methods to try there. It's been a day. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna, you've got me curious. I'm going to have to try something this like that this week too. Yeah, it's my kids. It's um, I was so proud of myself because I got outside of my box, which uh -huh. doesn't happen often. This is the kids. The kids played with these things over years and years and years. And now I have them for the grandkids. And I thought of it, and you should see how cool it looks inside that ball. It, if if I could get all the highlights off of it. Yeah. Well, you just may have to go over to Mid Journey and have them do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Nice. I have a question for Steve. Are you still there, Steve? I am. I'm still here. I was just curious, what part of Colorado are you from? Lakewood, uh, West yeah. Denver suburbs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm down in Pueblo. I, my in-laws and stuff used to live up in Arvada, right by Stanley Lake. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. My my fiance teaches up there. Maybe I'll get to meet you sometime wandering around Colorado. Someday, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, you getting um, you getting um, still getting more snow up there in the Rockies? Yeah, we got about uh, six or seven inches last night. 
the they said the Rockies have a pretty good snowfall this year. Is that right? Yeah, it's been a pretty good pretty good year for snow. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, they sure need it. Wow. Yep. From what I heard, we're about 125 percent or 120 percent of normal. Yeah. It's good. Except in the Arkansas Valley, and they're down a little bit, but the uh, the Arkansas Valley gets a lot of its water from the western slope from the Frying Pan River project. So uh, the reservoir is filling up pretty good. Which where, now? Where's the Arkansas Valley? Uh, the Arkansas Valley uh, is that with the Arkansas River? Is that like way yeah, to the Arkansas River runs runs from Pueblo west up into Leadville or. Yeah, uh, somewhere up there okay. is where the headwaters are. But we get a lot of water from um, the Frying Pan River and other things through a big water diversion project of the 60s. Cool. That, yeah, that... I, I, I retired from Denver Waters, so I know how important water is in Colorado. Oh. Did, did you ever know Fred Boydston? Who? Fred Boydston. Name's not familiar. It was my uncle. He was the like the head of the water board, but he, he retired a lot younger than you. He retired, I think, in 1970 or something like that. But that was, was before my time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah. He but he, he was with the water board for a long time there. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be opening up the class for next week, the assignment? Yeah, I'll be up tomorrow. Tomorrow Any hints? Morning. No. No spoiler alert. Oh, man. Be surprised. Is next, is next week the last week? No, two oh, more. Two more. Two more. Okay. Two more. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm going to start uh, this coming week um, doing some live shows. So... We'll keep everybody posted on the, the Facebook thing, but I, I will be looking at some of the photographs from this class, Project 52 and stuff, but we'll be doing the critique live for the public. So it should be a lot of fun. Only positive critiques. I will not do ever do a neg negative critique of anyone's work for the public. Doesn't happen. We're only showing what went right. Um, would not be fair. Uh, to somebody to show what went wrong it's everybody makes mistakes so i'd be glad to give you some if you wanted to point out what the hell went wrong oh it, yeah <laughs> I've, I've had volunteers i've had volunteers i mean we've done uh you know some uh live portfolio things with a couple of uh couple of ex friends <laughs> 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 but <Ex -friends>. uh, <laughs> you know so, but uh yeah no that, i think it's i think it's valuable and I, and to do it live and people can ask questions because i generally i just do it by myself here and uh, i've made a pact with myself to do more live stuff so I've, I've got some software that lets me show my screen and talk and get the chat coming up the window and we'll see how it goes don't know if it's going to be youtube or facebook or possibly both, but we'll keep you all apprised. Everybody have a good one and we will see you next you week. Too. Take care. Have a good one. Thank all you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.